Good evening and welcome to the program. It was Australia's most deadly home fire ever. 11 people, eight of them children, killed as an inferno engulfed the home in which they were sleeping. Two families, together for a cousin's sleepover, ripped apart by tragedy. Three years after that fatal fire at Slacks Creek, south of Brisbane, the scars remain raw for the survivors. And disturbingly, for the rest of us, authorities have not heeded the lessons from the tragedy. As our special investigation reveals, Australia's most popular fire alarm, the one that's likely fitted in your home, is unlikely to save you. Tonight, the alarming truth. 6 a.m. and Jeremiah Lale is starting today as he does every day at the local cemetery. I get there early in the morning, wait for the security to open the gate. I spend my time with my kids. Thank you. Good morning, kids. Morning, Han. Going there, cemetery, sitting there. Hey. Talk to them, I know they come, but sometimes I feel they can hear me. Hey. For several hours each morning and again every evening, Jeremiah visits his family. Daddy need your help from you guys, huh? To talk and to sit with his wife and five children. At the cemetery, I sit there crying, keep talking to them. Tell them, I know you can hear me, but I can't hear you. You lost everyone? Lost everyone, everything. Everything. Jeremiah lost his family on the night of the 24th of August, 2011. The dawn light revealed a scene of devastation at this house in Slacks Creek, southeast Queensland. But it wasn't only Jeremiah's family claimed by the flames. Bless every one of us, Lord. We love you, Lord, from the bottom of our heart. The Taufer family was also devastated that terrible night three years ago. We miss our family. We love you. We ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Tracy and her dad, Tao, must now look after each other. Tracy lost her daughter, her mum, her sister, her auntie, two nieces and five cousins that night. Tao lost his wife, his daughter and eight grandchildren. I don't know how you even breathe with the level of grief you've had to endure. I have to stay strong for my father. Many times, you know, a lot of darkness, but he keeps me going. This is my daughter here. Mm. This is my mum. Tough, isn't it? This was a family that spent every Friday night together. It was around midnight and Tao was still awake when he realised there was a fire in the house. And I saw this light in my, in my office. It looked like a mist of smoke come up at the floor. It looked like there's a fire. So I called out to my two son-in-laws. Come down and help me. And I grab the house, try to put the fire off. We thought that we were going to put it off. Within moments, the smoke has turned to roaring flames. Jeremiah is woken to his father-in-law's desperate screams. It's very dark, very dark and very hot. Smoking inside, you can't see, even can't see your hand inside the house. I call my wife's name, uh, Jeanette, and the kids, the name of my kids. I thought maybe they already outside. When I jumped from the 
the window. And I tried to come back to the house. The, the fires everywhere. Hey, fellas, K2 job. House fire, Wagons Belt Street, Slack Street. I think I only am a 475. She was proceeding to Wagons Belt Street from the station. Sergeant Jacinda Panowitz was in the first police car to arrive on the scene. The, the smoke is, is so acrid and, and thick. It takes you a while to adjust and focus. Um, definitely the biggest fire I've ever been to. It was the early hours when that fatal fire broke out. Woman's voice desperately screaming, my children, my baby. 14 people, including eight children, were inside at the time. Sergeant Panowitz soon found Tao sitting in the gutter outside the blazing home. He just said, it's my house. I, I can't find my family. Uh, remember, we went through the, well, who's your family? How many people? How old are they? and he just kept talking and the, the names kept coming and we hit 11. And um, I, I just remember, can you, you say again, I, 11, are you talking about 11? The last of the bodies were recovered early this afternoon. There's a van carrying another body disappeared, the first of many goodbyes. <laughs> Out of the ashes, unbearable grief. <laughs> unimaginable loss and also a heartbreaking lesson. It can make the difference between surviving and dying in the fire. It can make that much difference. David Isaac is Australia's leading fire safety expert. He, like so many, was horrified by the Slacks Creek tragedy, but he certainly wasn't surprised. There are two types of smoke alarms. This one is a photoelectric, and this one is an ionisation. They look the same, they feel the same, they cost about the same. This is the one that's in more than 90% of Australian homes. In fact, it's probably the one in your home. Mm. Coming up, there's smoke. That's really toxic. But no alarm. I'm gonna have to get out and get out how $50 could save your family. And sleep easier. And wake in the morning alive. So what are authorities waiting for? What will it take to save lives? What? That's next on 60 Minutes. Against all odds. They're the superhero survivors. David Attenborough's Life, Wednesday, 7.30 on 9. To stand tall, one must first stand comfortably. Good thing I bought new shoes. Now is the time to unleash your life force. Good thing I bought a Jeep. Be a part of something iconic. Concerto by Finbar will rise to 38 storeys. The tallest residential tower in East Perth, capturing panoramic views. With modern interiors and resort-style facilities, this is luxury living at its best. Prices range from $675,000 up to $1.6 million. Over 75 apartments already sold. Secure your place with only a $10,000 deposit. Concertoapartments.com.au Move to the rhythm of the city. Don't just dream about doing those things you'd love to do. Grab a ticket in the $21 million Saturday Lotto Super Draw and give luck a chance. See Boardwalk for stunning interior and exterior shutters, plus quality aluminium screening and gates, all at the lowest price, guaranteed. Call 1300 112 333 or go to boardwalk.com.au. 
I switched to QBE because I know they'll look after me if I have a claim. Outstanding value car insurance made possible by QBE. Call 133 723 or go online. Switch today and give yourself a, a big, big tick. tick. At Drovers Inside and Out, we have everything you need under the one roof. We believe range, quality, comfort and style should not be compromised to get a great price. Great range, great quality, great prices. That's Drovers Inside and Out. Oh, look at this. Even left-handed and stuck to your missus, you can get on a trifecta. You're floating, mate. Into the bet slip. That's it. Pick your stake. How easy is this? Boom! The new Sportsbet mobile app. Download it now. This is Shamway and he's my new best friend. Next. This is a carry shell and I found it on a very remote beach called Rafferty's Bluff where we went for the weekend. My brother also found a long... They must have bought a jeep. A big brother first. One housemate will be given thousands of dollars to evict themselves and leave the game. Tuesday, 7.30. From the dead, Batman's slipperiest enemy is born. There's gonna be another murder. Murder. Witness the rise of Penguin. <laughs> Australia's number one new drama. Hello, James. Old friend. Gotham, coming up next on Nine. What's happened to the Robinsons? They bought a Jeep. 60 Minutes, brought to you by Jeep. Don't hold back. Welcome back to 60 Minutes and our special investigation. Like most of us, I thought the fire alarms fitted in my home would protect my family. But what I've just seen is shocking. A house billowing with smoke and the fire alarm failing to go off. It's the same type of alarm found in most Australian homes and uses what's called ionisation technology. The other type of alarm is called photoelectric. The difference between the two couldn't be more dramatic. The difference between life and death. We're suiting up. Obviously, this is um, a fair bit different than what people have got in their houses. Oh, it's got a few more layers. Yeah, but that's how dangerous the fires can be. Yeah. And we, to we, test the effectiveness of the fire alarm that's most likely in your home. Breathing apparatus needed as well. Absolutely. I'm with the Northern Territory's Assistant Fire Commissioner, Grant Hamill. Don't do it too tight, but make sure it's nice and snug. Well, here we are, Carl. These are the smoke alarms. Straight from the hardware store, both types of household smoke alarms. There's two photoelectric and two ionisation. We're testing which type activates fastest. This is the initial code of ignition. On the couch, a hot soldering iron simulates a smouldering cigarette. And soon, there's smoke. So this is just a couple of minutes and you can see it smoking like that. Quite extraordinary, isn't it? Monitoring the results, fire safety expert David Isaac. OK, guys, we can see the smoke building up on the monitor. And you can see now it's sort of starting to layer a little bit. David's been telling regulators for years that Australian homes have got the wrong type of alarm. And he points to the devastating Taufa and Lale family fire. That house had ionisation alarms, but they'd been turned off because they kept going off when they weren't supposed to. Photoelectric alarms don't have the same problem. But there's no doubt in my mind that if they had photoelectric smoke alarms in that home, they wouldn't have been disconnected. That's the first thing. And 
the activation of those photoelectric smoke alarms would have given precious minutes advance notice of a fire. It's a big call. It is a big call. But we know the minutes, minutes there, seconds there would have made a difference. While the ionisation alarms might go off when you need them least, back at the test house we're finding out which alarm sounds fastest when you need it most. Five minutes in and the toxic smoke is already heading towards dangerous levels. OK, fellas, uh, it's David. Uh, you're in five minutes, 37 seconds now. We can see the smoke on the monitor starting to build at the ceiling level. There may not be any naked flames yet, but this is the critical moment for a sleeping family. An alarm must wake them soon if they're to get out alive. Typically, people who die in house fires die while they're asleep from fires that develop typically from a, low, a long smouldering phase. Could be an electrical fault, could be a cigarette on a couch, could be clothes in a dryer and the dryer's malfunctioned. It has this long smouldering phase that fills the house with smoke. That's the time when the occupants need to get the warning and it's before the house fills with smoke. This is a very graphic example of what happens in households every night in Australia. OK, guys, you're seven minutes and 20 seconds in. The photoelectric alarm has done its job. Seven minutes and 22 seconds after the first signs of smoke. But as precious minutes tick by, the ionisation alarms remain dangerously silent. Good on you guys, I think it's time to get out. This smoke is toxic. Without the breathing apparatus, we'd be dead. I had no idea it would be that graphic and that difficult to be in that room at that time. And the reality is 90% of Australians don't know there's a difference between these alarms. We're told to leave the room and abandon the test after 15 minutes. And still, the ionisation alarms are dead silent. Not long after, smoke turns to fire. It's these sorts of results that have led the Northern Territory to make photoelectric alarms a legal requirement in all homes, the only jurisdiction in Australia to do so. The evidence was persuasive enough for us to have it made law and mandate that photoelectric alarms are installed in every residence in the Northern Territory. That includes caravans, transportables, demountables, and even those high-class safari tents that you see at resorts. Even in the tents? Absolutely. Is it making a difference? Well, we believe so. Early days yet, um, but anything to save lives. For years, David Isaac has been arguing with state and federal authorities to make photoelectric alarms compulsory in all homes right across the country. Frustrated, he's now breaking ranks and speaking out. I've been trying to do it for personally now for nearly 10 years. And we produced all the CSIRO test evidence which shows how bad these things are in the test fire in the CSIRO laboratory. It defies logic. It does, and we kill between 50 and 150 people a year in residential home fires. But I can guarantee you that if photoelectric smoke alarms were mandated in homes in Australia and New Zealand, that the death toll from residential fires would drop because people would get early warning. There's very little difference at the end of the day in terms of adequate warning Neil Savory is general manager of the Australian Building Codes Board, the body that recommends which fire alarms will keep you safest in your home. Every study that's been done of late has said that the photoelectric alarms give you valuable minutes, valuable minutes 
on top of the ionisation alarms. Well, the board is not satisfied at this stage that it needs to make any further changes to the code. What, what will it take for the board to make that decision to save lives? That, well, the, the board has taken numerous decisions to save, save lives. In fact... But this, is a, this, this year, is a very simple one. This is a very simple one. This alarm goes off sometimes five or six minutes before the other. Well, I'm just saying look, there are two out there. Yeah, there are. W one's better than the other, clearly. Well, the one alarm clearly is better at performance well, than the other. Well, that's that's your opinion. No, that it's not my a, opinion. It's the imp yeah. the opinion of the experts. Well, there, there is there the ones is, on the front line that are dealing with this. Say, that are dealing with having to go to fires and having to pull kids out of fires and pull families out of fires when they could have been given those extra minutes. The the evidence that we have says that there is little difference between the two. And one but there fact, is enough difference uh, for photoelectric alarms to be mandatory in all Australian public buildings. Why wouldn't the board be saying, hang on a second, it's good enough for most commercial buildings in this country, it's good enough for hospitals to be used. Why wouldn't it be good enough to be used in households where people are most vulnerable? Well, it, 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 it hasn't been demonstrated to the board's satisfaction that one performs better in all circumstances over the other, and it, the board doesn't uh, delineate between different types of products. What if one alarm can give you five or six minutes, even yeah. a minute, and, and it's that much better? OK, and if there is ultimately a body of evidence, an overwhelming body of evidence that that's the case, then the board would obviously give that serious consideration, but it won't be reflected as mandating necessarily a particular product. It defies belief that we're protected in shopping centres and hospitals and hotels, but not in our own homes. It does, it does, and that's in our own homes is where we kill people. When we're talking about cost, though, what are we talking about here for an average household, say, three-bedroom house? Well, at the moment, you can go to Bunnings and you can buy four photoelectric smoke alarms in a pack, photoelectric, nine volt, for $49. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks for four photoelectrics and you can screw them on the ceiling. And sleep easier. And sleep, yes. And wake in the morning alive. For the grieving Taufa and Lale families, this is painfully personal. It's a long time I haven't touched mum's face. What a lovely face. Tracy is desperate to find a legacy amid such devastating loss. What's the one thing to come out of this that you want people to get? I want everybody to purchase photoelectric smoke alarms to be installed in every single home and made mandatory in Australia and hopefully the world. It will save a lot of lives. I just hope to God that no one else goes through what we went through.